I've bashed Microsoft a lot in the past for the spooky things that they do on their operating system. Mostly the telemetry, sending your usage stats and data to Microsoft. And I've even criticized distros like Ubuntu who have tried to implement other privacy concerning features within their operating system. But it's only fair that Apple gets a spanking as well because they've implemented some spookage into their operating systems within the past few years. So you might have seen this viral article written by Jeffrey Paul that outlines some of the privacy concerns about macOS Big Sur, which reports to Apple every application that you run, the time of day that it is ran, and your IP address, which of course, your IP address, if you didn't know, contains some geolocation information that at the very least tells somebody what city you are in. And this data collection can also grab your IP even if you're using a VPN on your machine. The only way that you can actually go about spoofing your IP to Apple in this case would be to use a VPN that is configured on the network level through your router, assuming that your router's firmware actually supports configuring a VPN on it. And they also took the liberty of disabling certain applications that security conscious Mac users were using to circumvent this spookiness. Now, this usage activity reporting, it has existed for a while now. I know that some people think this is exclusive to Big Sur. Some people are even memeing on it by calling it Big Surveillance. But on the macOS front, it has been in place since at least 2018. And as far as I know, this type of stuff has always existed in iOS. But what's worse about Big Sur is that at first, these reports were transmitted unencrypted, which means anybody can do the surveillance on your network if they're capturing packets or any three letter agencies. And of course your ISP, they can see everything that you were doing as well. Now, according to Apple, this is something that they are going to fix. Uh, it says so in really indirect words on this link that Apple just updated. And they're also going to be giving users an option to disable these reports to Apple about what apps you're using and when you're using them and how you're using them. But this is going to be an opt out thing. So by default, whenever you buy a new MacBook and you set it up, the spookiness is enabled. And that means that the vast majority of people, they're either not going to know or they're just not going to care enough to disable it. So all of this spookiness really begs the question, why does this exist in the first place? Apple claims that these checks are necessary to verify if an app contains known malware and whether the developer's signing certificate has been revoked or not. And that's a pretty classic explanation. It's pretty much the go-to for any OS or app developer these days that implement this kind of spookiness. But if Apple cares so much about the security of their OS and their users that are using it, why wouldn't they just open source it? I've said many times that when you have a closed source application or operating system, you're basically betting that your developers and your security professionals are better than all of the other ones that are out there in the world. Now, I get it, Apple is a trillion dollar company, they can definitely afford some very experienced devs and some security expertise, probably some of the best that exist out there in the world. But I really doubt that that's enough to beat literally everybody else. And this has pretty much been confirmed because with each new release of macOS, there are bug bounties that are collected by independent security professionals for things like remote code execution and privilege escalation. So I'm a little bit dubious about the pure intentions that Apple is alleging here, that it is just purely to protect the user and that it's purely to protect their security. If I had to bet, there was probably an off-record deal that was made between Apple and the United States government. If you remember a few months ago, Apple, along with some other major tech companies, was brought before Congress for an antitrust hearing. 
And just like any other time that a person or an organization commits a crime, what do they do? They can play ball or they can take the full penalty of the crime. It's just like if you and your buddies go and rob a bank and they catch one of you. What do they usually do? They say, hey, you know, you can serve a reduced sentence or maybe you could just get a slap on the wrist. But you got to snitch on your buddies. You know, you got to tell us how you did it. Uh, or especially if you're uh, within a cartel or like some type of drug dealing game, they'll be like, hey, you got to wear a wire. You got to go collect some information from uh, for us. You know, we're not really interested in you. We're actually interested in the kingpin. So. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if the increased surveillance that's happening on macOS, iOS, and also the backdoor, backdooring the encryption of iMessage, because that's a thing that Apple has been doing for, again, a few years now. I bet that that's all part of a deal that Apple made with Uncle Sam so that they won't bring down the antitrust hammer on them and break up their precious trillion dollar company. And what's even more disturbing than my tinfoil hat uh, conspiracy theories about why Apple is doing surveillance is this white knighting and debunking that Apple fanboys have attempted to do from these allegations. Now, again, most of this is mentioned in Jeffrey Paul's article, so definitely give it a read. I'm going to link it down in the description below. But these defenders of Apple are on a whole new level of fail. Like I've seen them saying things like, oh, it's not really that bad if your ISP knows all of the applications that you're running and that they have your IP address because they already have that stuff anyway. Uh, they don't necessarily know every single application that you're running, you know, not if it's actually using a proper encryption or if you use a VPN. Apple is obviously bypassing all of that stuff though, so if you are trying to use a VPN to circumvent that, uh, then they're just giving it to the ISPs for free anyway. Um, and there's other things like this claim here. So they're trying to say um, that the information being sent actually looks nothing like a hash. But, you know, then right here in the, uh, in the code here, we see the issuer hash name, the issuer key hashed, and you've got these strings right here. These look a whole lot like a hash to me. And then they even kind of contradict themselves down here where, um, you know, they're saying that, oh, these certificates, you know, it's not on a per app basis, right? Like it doesn't exactly tell you what app you're using. It just tells you the name of the developer that created that app. And they even give a really poor example here. So they're saying uh, like with Mike, I mean, not Microsoft, with Mozilla, uh, they're saying that you have the same certificate, right? You've got the same developer certificate, whether you're using Mozilla Firefox or whether you're using um, Mozilla Thunderbird are the two examples that they give in this article. Now, this doesn't matter for a couple of reasons. Number one, most of the developers that are on the App Store only have one app. So if you know the certificate of that developer, you know what app they're using. They literally have no other apps out there. And the reason why I say that this example with Firefox and Thunderbird is so poor, how many people do you think are out there using Thunderbird compared to the amount of people that are using Firefox? In fact, the, the author of this article, I'm willing to make a bet with you. I'll bet you pay me $5 every single time that this developer certificate is connected to Firefox, and I'll pay you $5 every single time it's connected to Thunderbird or literally any other Mozilla application. By far, the most used Mozilla application is Firefox, hands down. It's like if you told me that you're listening to a designer song and then saying that you bet I can't guess the song, it's probably Panda. I might not be right every single time. Maybe it's Timmy Turner, but I assume Panda. And it's pretty safe to assume that when, again, most developers only have one application or they just have one application that is by far their most popular one. You're going to be right most of the time. But to sum this all up, the only way that you can avoid spooks is to use free software. It doesn't matter whether you go to Apple 
or Microsoft. It doesn't matter what claims these companies make about how much they care about your privacy. The only way that you can have any control over it is if you ultimately control the software. They can easily change their executives. They can easily change their policies whenever they want to. Closed source is always spooky.